In the last part, we saw the Aksharadi Karnam. First Sutra there, Aksharam Amaranta Dhrte. The Akshara Shabda does not stand for Omkara. It does not stand for Varna and thereby you cannot take it as Omkara because Ambara, Ambaranta Dhritehe Akshara there is Adhara for entire Prapancha. Now the next sutra is introduced by saying Nanu Ambaranta Dharanam Pradhani Api Sambhoti Ityataha. If you say that Adhara of prapancha is the meaning of akshara, then it can stand for pradhana also. Karanatva. Pradhana is karana for entire prapancha, and karana is the adhara for karya. Thereby, pradhana can be, can be the meaning. Why should you say it is Brahma? So that is refuted by saying Sacha Prashasanath, Sacha Prashasanath. So that dhriti which is being mentioned, sacha dhriti hi, the adhar, dharana, that dhriti, sacha prashasanat brahmaeva, it can mean only brahma because prashasana is a prakarsha shasanam, prakarsha shasanat, so prakarsheda shasanat. So that Prakarshena Shasana is there, that Anushasana is possible only for a sentient being. Pradhana is Jada. It is not a Chetana Vastu and Prashasana has been mentioned where Sacha Dhriti hi Parmeshwara Seva Karma na Anyasya Achetanasya. Achetanasya Anyasya Pradhanasya Dhriti iti Karma na Sambhavati. There is no possibility of Jadavastu doing any Shasana. Kutaha Prashasanat. Where is that? Yetasseva Aksharasya Prashasane Gargi Surya Chandramasau Vivrutau Tishtataha Ityadina Prashasana Shravanadityartaha. Not only it is just an Adhara. Just like Nayayika would say that Ghata. Ghatas dhriti is in Kapalas or we would say Mrit also. In Mrit or in Kapala, Ghatas dhriti is there, Sudharana is there. The Adhara for Ghata is, are these two Kapalas which are Karana or Mrit Pinda, clay. So clay is the dhriti Adhara for pot. But is the clay managed by the, uh, is the pot managed by the clay or kapalas, is it, is there an anushasana possible? No, anushasana is of the nimitta karana. Kulala can do some prashasana of the ghata or having sold it, some other sentient being can do some prashasana of the ghata. Similarly, the prapancha 
may have upadana karana as per sankhya the upadana karana is pradhana so we say pradhana means prakriti or maya and maya upahita chaitanya is ishvara thereby brahma does have a component of maya also whereby this nirguna brahma becomes saguna ishvara and thereby becomes upadana karana however maya by itself cannot do anything so pradhana by itself cannot do anything it cannot become upadana karana let alone nimitta karana so nimitta karanatvam is of the sentient being who may you know lend it out brahma by the mere presence of sachidananda swarupatvam may lend chetanatvam just like satta is also lent so upadana karanatvam of maya if at all it is seen only of maya it is not so because the satta and spurti of maya is also due to brahma so this ishwaratvam where brahma here all is sacha prashasanat brahma sacha sruti brahma eva prashasanat all this sutras talk of brahma which is saguna brahma because by laksh by the lakshana in the earlier sutra the first sutra itself not the first sutra first sutra is athato brahma jignasa but there brahma who is this brahma lakshana is the second sutra which is janmadhyasya tha so that janma sthiti and bhanga is possible for saguna brahma only nirguna brahma has nothing to do with prapancha because there is no prapancha from nirguna brahma perspective if at all there is a perspective we imagine so from this prapancha drishti as sausaris as sadakas we look at what would be the parmarthika drishti which is the nirguna brahma sthiti so there we see that there is no other nanya prashthiti nanya chrunoti ityadi that we saw so there is no one else nothing else therefore no karanatvam is needed because there is no karya from that that drishti but when we talk about the samsara prapancha the saguna brahma has anurutti in all these sutras to explain that now that saguna brahma is along with maya shakti which loosely sankhyas call as pradhana but that pradhana by itself is jada they also say by mere presence prakriti starts i mean the pradhana starts acting as the karana for the prapancha by the mere presence of the purusha that supreme purusha not the jiva purusha but the supreme purusha some say that it is ishvara in sankhya so there is a seshvara sankhya also but mostly we consider sankhya as nirishvara that purusha remains separate just by looking at someone if someone is getting influence someone other is getting influence that earlier someone has nothing to do with it so he is a shuddha bhukta do not a karta bhukta so prapancha karta purusha is not there in sankhya but prapancha bhukta is there that bhukta purusha pervades all the way into individual jivas also <coughs> who are then again karta they become karta but shuddha purusha is not a karta also in jivas also that shuddha purusha is not karta only bhukta so this kind of arrangement they have in their own darshana <coughs> but shuddha pradhana meaning plain pradhana who has no association with purusha or brahma that cannot be karana of any type therefore it cannot be dhartri also so dhriti is not possible for that pradhana 
तो सा च द्रुति प्रधान से न संभव होती परमेश्वर से वो कर्म दैट धारणा इज दी कर्म ऑफ चेतन परमेश्वर न अन्य से अचेतन से प्रधान से जड़स्य सो दी इंसेंशियन कैन नॉट बिकम दी धारण कर्त्री आल्सो इन इफ यू टेक प्रकृति और माया एज त्रिलिंग इन प्रधान इट इज न्यूटर सो दैट धारणम इज नॉट पॉसिबल Why? Because Prashasana has been mentioned. If you say Dharana is like Ghatakapala Adi, then Etasya Aksharasya, Etasya Vai, Aksharasya, of this Akshara, or this Akshara has indeed Vai, this is why is Vai, indeed this Akshara alone, He Gargi, not have, has Prashasana, and in that Prashasana there is सूर्य चंद्र मसो दिस इज उपलक्षण फॉर अदर्स आल्सो सो एंटायर प्रपंच ऑफ सूर्य एंड चंद्र आल्सो विवृत हो तिष्ठतः दे रिमेन बीइंग कंट्रोल्ड कंट्रोल्ड बाय हुम बाय चेतन वस्तु नॉट बाय एनीवन एल्स सो दे आर बीइंग मैनेज बाय सेंशिएंट एंटिटी इत्यादि ना प्रशासन श्रवणा दित्यर्ता दिस श्रवणा ऑफ मंत्रा इज देर वे प्रशासन इज हर्ड एंड प्रशासन इज पॉसिबल ओनली फॉर चेतन वस्तु प्रधान आदि निराशे न ब्रह्मोपादने हेतु अंतर माह ओके प्रधान इज नॉट दी मीनिंग ऑफ दी अक्षर शब्दा देर बिकॉज़ ध्रुति इज नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर अचेतन प्रशासन इज नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर अचेतन एंड इवन इफ यू रॉन्गली इंटरप्रिटेड इंटरप्रिट इन दी संख्या शास्त्र दैट प्रशासन मे नॉट बी पॉसिबल बट ध्रुति इज पॉसिबल स्टिल यू हैव टू गिव अप दी मीनिंग ऑफ प्रधान फॉर अक्षर बिकॉज बोथ हैव टू फिट इन सो देर सूर्य चंद्रमस इफ देर इज डाउट सूर्य एंड चंद्रमस दिस आकार इज दीर्घ ड्यू टू देर इज वृद्धि स्वचामाधे वृद्धि देवता द्वंद्वे च देवता शब्दाद एंड द्वंद्व समास देर इज सच वृद्धि देवता देवता इज दैट गोइंग द्वंद्व सो सूर्य इज अ देवता चंद्रमस इज अ देवता सो आदि वृद्धि सूर्य अकार इज बिकम आकार इट इज नॉट सूर्य एंड अचंद्रमस इट इज सूर्य एंड चंद्र सो सूर्य चंद्र सूर्य चंद्रमस That is the dwandva samasa there of Surya Devata and Chandra Devata. So, Pradhana Adi Nirasena. Pradhana meaning has been dropped. If the Pradhana meaning has been dropped, how do you land on Brahma meaning? So, one kind of an explanation has been given. Another explanation is being given now. Brahma Upadhani Hetvantaram Aha. Why would Brahma become Upadhana Karana there? अन्य भाव व्यावृत्ति जा, अन्य भाव व्यावृत्ति जा, सो अन्य भाव व्यावृत्ति है जा, and also because of अन्य भाव व्यावृत्ति has been done, others have been refuted, other भाव, भाव ये अन्य भाव भी भी अन्यतम, what is अन्यतम देर अन्य धर्म, भाव अन्य भाव देर भी Anyatvam is the dharma of Anya. And who is Anya? Whoever is Anya from Brahma. So whatever is Anya from Brahma, Brahmana Anyasya Dharmana Vyavrutyescha. That is the meaning of the Sutra. So whatever is different from Brahma. What is different from Brahma? Pradhanadi. So Pradhanadi dharmas have been dropped, have been negated in the same brahad mantra section there therefore also if other dharmas have been other than brahma any other entities dharmas have been dropped or discarded negated from holding the meaning of akshara then only brahma bhavas are mentioned 
Only Brahma Dharmas are talked about. Therefore, Anya Bhav Vyavrutyesha Brahma Eva. Akshara Shabdhartha. The Akshara stands for Aksharam Brahma Eva. Anyasya, Anyasya meaning Pradhana Dehe Bhavaha, Anyasya Bhavaha, Anya Bhavaha. So, Anyasya meaning Pradhana Dehe, Pradhana and others. You can call as Jeeva, whoever you can think of, whatever Purva Paksha comes up with. Whatever a pur- any Purva Paksha comes up with, any Purva Paksha talks about anything other than Brahma, all those are included by Anya. Anyasya Pradhana Dehe Bhavaha, Bhava means Dharmaha. Saha Anya Bhavaha, that is Samasartha. Tad Vyavrutte, Tad means Anya Bhava Vyavrutte. Because of this Bhava Vyavrutte is Panchami, Heta Panchami. Because of Vyavrutti, because of other dharmas being refuted in the mantra, where Tadvai Tadaksharam Gardya Drishtam Drishtru. Ityadi tadvipari tad dharma shravanat na pradhanadi aksharam. Pradhanadi cannot be akshara. Brahma alone can be akshara. Why? Because tadvipari tad dharma shravanat. Tadvipari tad means this tadva etad aksharam gargya drishtam adrishtam drashtru. So there Drashtru has been mentioned, Drashtrutva in any way, as we saw in the earlier sutra, is possible only for Chetana. Just like Prashasana is possible for only Chetana Vastu, similarly only a sentient being can do Darshana, can see, cognize something. Darshana takes place only in a sentient being, not in an insentient being. And Gargi Adrishtam, Adrishtam Drashtru, Adrishtam. Pradhana can be Adrishta, but Brahma can also be Adrishta. However, Brahma alone can be Drashtru, Darshana Karta. Pradhana cannot be Darshana Karta. So if the Puro Pushi is in Adrishta, Adrishtam, Pradhanam, okay, Bhavatu Nama, but Drashtru, can Pradhana be Drashtru? No. Therefore, Tadu, Tadva, Tadvai, Etan, Aksharam, indeed, only. So indeed or only this, only this akshara, this, this, this is that akshara gargi, which is adrushta as well as drashta, drashtru, it's a neuter, therefore akshara being neuter, drashtru, and similarly adrushtam, neuter, it is not second case, it is first case only. So adrushtam as well as drashtru is the meaning of akshara, their dharmas are talked about, meaning, meaning, these are dharmas, because visheshanas are there. Drashtru Aksharam, Adrashtam Aksharam. So Adrashtam Pradhanam is possible by Visheshana Visheshya Bhava, but Drashtru Pradhanam is not possible. Ityadi Tad Vipari, Tad Vipari there Tad is Pradhanadi. Tad Vyavrutti is Pradhanadi Vyavrutti, Anya Vyavrutti, Pradhanadi Vyavrutti. Similarly, the Tad here in the Vritti, not in the Mantra, in the Mantra Tad and Etad are in Samanadi Kran with Aksharam. That aksharam is not anya from Brahma. Anya in the vritti is explained as tat, tat vyavrutti, tasya, anyasya vyavrutti. So the tat pronoun in the vritti is not the tat pronoun in the mantra. In the mantra it stands for tadva, etat is Brahma. Akshara, aksharam Brahma. Because it is adrishtam as well as drashtru. Whereas this tad here in the vritti that is anya, anya from Brahma. So, Pradhanadi and Tadvyavrutte because of the Bhavas, Anya, Anya Bhavyavrutte, Tad is not Anya, Tad is Anya Bhava, sorry. So, Tad is, Tad pronoun in the Vritti stands for, in the Bhagavan uh, Sadashi Brahmendra's Vritti, this Tad stands for Anya Bhava. Anya Bhava is Brahma Anya Bhava. Different from Brahma, Pradhanadi Bhava Vyavrutti. So, that Pradhanadi Bhavas and is Mentioned by Tat here, by the, captured by the pronoun Tat here, and Tad Viparita is Pradhanadi Bhava Viparita Dharma Shravana. So the Dharma Shravana due to Shravana of what? Of Dharmas. Which Dharmas? Dharmas which are Viparita, different. Different from what? Different from Tat. Tat meaning Anya Bhava. 
प्रधान आदि धर्म सो दो ड्यू टू श्रवण ऑफ धर्म विचार ऑपोजिट एक्चुअली विपरीत दे आर डिफरेंट बट ही आर एक्चुअली ऑपोजिट फ्रॉम दी धर्म ऑफ प्रधान आदि अन्य फ्रॉम ब्रह्म देर फोर वॉट न प्रधान आदि अक्षरम प्रधान आदि के नॉट बी दी मीनिंग ऑफ अक्षर एंड दैट अक्षर उपासना इज नॉट प्रधान आदि और एनी अदर उपासना इट इज ज्ञान एज वी सॉ हियर इन दी अक्षरम सिद्धांत ब्रह्म ज्ञानम फल भेद वेर एस ओंकार रूप और हियर प्रधान इफिटॉल सांख्या से उपासना But pradhana upasana is not possible. Sankhyas will say what pradhana is to be known. Sankhyas are also they will also say that jnana. Then what do we do with that jnana? So with that jnana of pradhana being jagat karana and purusha being bhukta separate from pradhana the uh, pradhana and all the pradhana karyas, purusha is chetana who has nothing to do with the sharira the. All the sharira, sharira treya, you can say, has nothing to do with the sharira treya, has nothing to do with the prapancha jagat as karya of pradhana because he has nothing to do with pradhana. And then yoga will step in. What do you do with this jnana? Then the practical practicals are covered with the practice is covered by yoga shastra supplementing sankhya's chuddha jnana. So sankhya and yoga go hand in hand there. Then. yoga you will bring in ishra also wherever you want to do dhyana so that you can separate yourself out from the from the sharira and gain samadhi and that is moksha as per yogis so they you can see that there it is dhyana on purusha by understanding the pradhana jnana so pradhana jnani na then purusha dhyana is possible or however yoga Uh, yoga sutras explain jnana on, on various entities so that you the final aim is to separate the purusha from pradhana and pradhana karya at an individual level but others may have said omkara rupa akshara upasana so sankhya se akshara jnana is sufficient and then you can do jnana on purusha because this akshara is to be separated out so all these are possibilities i am saying as to upasana और ज्ञाना विथ योग काइंड ऑफ उपासना योग शास्त्र बट सिद्धांत इज नॉट ब्रह्म ज्ञान ओनली इट इज नॉट उपासना इट इज ब्रह्म ज्ञान अक्षरा मीन्स ब्रह्म नॉट इज नॉट ब्रह्म उपासना बट ब्रह्म ज्ञान फॉर मुक्ति सो न प्रधान आदि अक्षर मीन्स अक्षर शब्दार्थ प्रधान आदि नास्ती देन वॉट इज इट किंतु ब्रह्म है अवैध सिद्ध ब्रह्म हैज ऑलरेडी बीन एक्सप्लेन एज ए मीनिंग एंड दृष्टु इज पॉसिबल ओनली इन ब्रह्म दृष्टुत्व इज पॉसिबल ओनली इन ब्रह्म देयर फॉर ब्रह्म इज द मीनिंग ऑफ अक्षर पूर्वम वर्णे रूढस्य अक्षर शब्दस्य जगत धृति लक्षण लिंगेन ब्रह्मणी न क्षरति इति योग वृत्ति आशिता नाउ द पूर्व पक्षी सेज Look at what you have done. You have taken rudi artha as gauna, and which is supposed to be mukhya. Rudi artha is rudi artha yoga baliyasi. So uh, rudi artha is baliyan artha. So rudi yoga baliyasi. So rudi yoga baliyasi. There is three linga. So that sounds clear, is there? But you, Rudi Artha, if you say it becomes Pulinga, then you say Baliyan. So Rudi is has stronger the prasiddha meaning, the well-known meaning in the yoga holds good for any word compared to the yogi comes the derived meaning. This is the niyama. Now based on this rule, you should have interpreted. But what you have done, although Akshara stands for Varna by Rudi Artha by prasiddha Artha. You took resort to the yogi ka artha derived meaning, and you said nakshrati thi aksharam that which does not have shaya, that which never goes away, meaning it does not deplete, is Brahma alone. Brahma Vrindho, that limitless entity, is that which will never 
बिकम लिमिटेड विल नेवर डिप्लीट ऑफ इट्स वृद्धि विच विल नेवर लूज एनी थिंग सो दैट लिमिटेड लिमिटलेस अनंत इज द मीनिंग ऑफ अक्षरा एंड दिस इज दी योगी का अर्थ दी योग वृत्ति योग वृत्ति इज योगी का व्युत्पत्ति दी डेरिवेशन बेस्ड ऑन दी धातु and pratya you have given the meaning and you took resort to that meaning says the purva pushi to the siddhanti and then finally you landed on brahma as the meaning of akshara not varna whereas we took the general rule and we said that meaning is varna and that varna can be only omkara because varna is akaraadi and chandogya upanishad akaro hi sarva vak so all vak is akara and that what is that omkara sarva vak cannot be akara akara there means omkara therefore akshara means omkara and akshara upasana is omkara upasana this is what the purva pakshi had claimed but it was refuted by pramanas multiple pramana shabda as well as tarka anumana what has been accepted by the purva pakshi however now that acceptance becomes acceptance of the mantra artha earlier mantra artha or earlier adhikaran artha itself becomes the basis becomes a drishtanta and there why there is a drishtant sangati now as to there are other places where you should do so where you should use such kind of a logic that you have used now so purvam varne rudasya akshara shabdasya the akshara shabda which is rudha which is prasiddha popular in the meaning of varna varne is vishay saptam ide varne in a varna in a letter akshara has rudhi artha so that sasya shabdasya varne rudasya akshara shabdasya jagat dhruti lakshana lingena since there is a linga which is what linga is nyapaka so there is a nyapaka shabda in the mantra as to dhruti dhruti is there dhruti by using jagat dhruti prapancha dharana using that meaning in samanaadi karanyam or that dhruti as karma also of akshara there why you use that shabda is having lakshana meaning and through the nyapaka shabda such kind of a nyapaka shabda lingena jagat driti lakshana lingena brahmani na kshrati iti yoga vritti rashita so varne rudasya akshara shabdasya brahmani yoga vritti rashita instead of taking what the rudha of rudhi artha of akshara shabda in varna you have taken the yoga vritti you have taken ashraya of the yoga vritti in brahma so this brahma is also brahmani is vishaya saptam brahmani vishaye yoga vritti rashrita giving of what rudhi in varna in a varna meaning varna vishaye and what is the hetu for the doing that jagat vritti lakshana linga so there is a linga nyapaka shabda of jagat vritti jagat dharana poshana that is possible only for a chetana vastu and thereby that becomes a lakshana uh, it's not necessarily chetana dharana is also possible for insentient because pradhana paksha will i mean sankhya will claim the pradhana as the meaning of jagat driti but akshara is not omkara it is not varna for that jagat driti lakshana linga has been used so this is two sutras earlier in the अंबरांत धृते हे अक्षरम अंबरांत धृते हे इन दिस सूत्र व्हाट यू हैव डन सेज द पूर्व पक्षी यू हैव यूज द योग वृत्ति तद्वत इहा अपि सो हियर आल्सो इन द नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट मंत्र व्हिच इज बीइंग कोटेड प्रश्न उपनिषद सो देयर ही सेज तद्वत इहा अपि प्रश्न उपनिषदि देश परिचिन्न फलश्रुति लिंगेन पर शब्दस्य आपेक्षिक परत्व विशिष्टे हिरण्य गर्भे वृत्ति रस्तु इति दृष्टांत संगत्या इदमह सो यूजिंग दैट दृष्टांत ऑफ द बृहद मंत्र अक्षर ब्रह्म 
jnanade akshara what you have done with is you have used the gauna you have taken resort to the gauna meaning compared to the mukhya meaning because of jagadhruti lakshana linga ityadi now here desha parichinna phalashruti lingena parashabdasya apekshika paratva visishte hiranya garbhe vrittirastu now what he says is that in the mantra which is going to come up yah punarvetam trimatrena om itte ityetena eva aksharena param purusham avidhyayit so there are this mantras and then dhyatavya dhyana so these mantras are going to come up where he says phala shruti there is desha parachin parichinna phala shruti that should become a linga so you have taken linga as the conclusive pramana in the aksharam ambaranta dhrutehe sutra in the brahad mantra section quoting that brahad mantra section now here this linga of desha parichin parichinna phala there is a limited limited phala so thereby what you should do is that here also you should use that linga and say that since there is a parichinna desha as phala the para shabda which has been used param purusham avidhyayit so uh, going back to this uh, pada what is the sangati to this pada third pada the third pada sangati is primarily or generally prayed mostly this section deals with aspashta brahmalinga vakyas of upanishad which are dealing with brahma jnana jnana kanda primarily there is also possibility of dhyana just like in the second pada there was aspashta brahmalinga vakyas dealt with there were these aspashta brahmala brahmalinga vakyas dealt with but primarily they were all in dhyana upasana kanda but there were one of some some uh, mantras which were dealing with jnana kanda meaning brahma jnana was the meaning there not brahma upasana here also primarily opposite to that meaning here primarily there is brahma jnana but there are some mantras which are upasana so for example this mantra is upasana why because purusham avidhyayit dhai chintane that upasana dhatu is there within the tingantra there in the vidhi vakya so param purusham avidhyayit param purusham that para from the siddhantis perspective would be paramatma para brahma however that para brahma is the rudhi artha all right meaning mukhya artha says the puro pakshi but linga is what that linga should help you conclude that para is not parmatma because desha parichinna phala shruti linga is there there is a phala which is limited so if the phala is limited then how can dhyana be on parmatma so the argument is argument holds water puro pakshi makes sense when he says that if at all phala is limited you have claimed earlier as to the brahma loka phala is there therefore the upasya has to be brahma now similarly this parichinna phala is there then how can there be upas upasya how can it be brahma so argument seems logical there as to with limited phala if you are getting limited phala then what dhyana you are doing on that should be a limited entity it cannot be paramatma so para shabdartha although rudhi artha is para brahma still with the linga of phalashruti which is giving parichinna desha for the upasaka therefore what para shabdasya apekshika paratva visishte hiranya garbhe vrittirastu therefore this paramatma who is ananta brahma need not be the meaning or cannot be the meaning of para shabda this mukhya artha of para brahma who is ananta 
cannot be the meaning of parapurusha param purusham there therefore that parapurusha should be having paratvam which is apekshika paratvam it is a relative paratvam that sup- most superior should not be used as a meaning there what should be the meaning then it should be relatively superior and thereby apekshika paratva vishishta brahma is hiranya garbha uh, is is not brahma that apekshika paratva vishishta purusha is the prathama jata prathama jata purusha is also jiva hiranya garbha is a jiva is although we say ishwara takes up the sharira aso what the sharira the sukshma sharira as soon as the ishwara by maya gets associated with the sukshma shariras of all jivas that entity is called as hiranya garbha but it is no longer ishwara really because ishwara wields maya whereas hiranya garbha has tadatmya sambandha with the sukshma shariras he is he has bhoga ishwara has no bhoga ishwara is a karta by akshepa from us what we do is that we say ishwara is jagat karta even when we say ishwara is jagat karta we do not say he is a bhokta what do we say he is a karma phala data but there is no adhyasa of bhoktritvam done in ishwara at any point of time but in hiranya garbha there is bhoga what kind of bhoga he has sarva sukha bhoga he has yuga pat sarva sukha bhoga he has bhoga as an upasana phala so many jivas have done upasanas across many janmas to get this kind of a hiranya garbha padvi what is that padvi that is association with hiranya garbha kind of antakarana or not kind of hiranya garbha antakarana this jiva will get hiranya garbha vasa hiranya garbha association in such a manner that he will have all the sukha bhog of all the jivas not dukha only sukha bhog of all jivas simultaneously that is the phala for hiranya garbha upasana this is not this upasana which is being mentioned it is a separate upasana multiple uh, things will lead to that kind of a janma that kind of a bhoga so hiranya garbha is a bhokta bhokta jiva so hiranya garbha is a prathama jata bhokta jiva as per the shastras therefore this hiranya garbha has paratva what kind of paratva he has paratva as visheshana hiranya garbha is parapurusha as well just like ishvara is parapurusha brahma is parapurusha similarly hiranya garbha is also parapurusha but what is the difference between the paratva paratvam of ishvara and paratvam of hiranya garbha this paratva of hiranya garbha is apekshika why because he is going to have an end at some point of time that jiva may be freed may not be freed that jiva if at all he has bhoga given as a phala and jnana has also taken place but bhoga is pending as part of prarabdha then there will be a long drawn prarabdha of several yugas whereby he will remain associated with hiranya garbha upadhi and keep on having sukha bhoga which he has claimed because he has done upasanas as prescribed by the shastras for such a long time and in with such shraddha that even with jnana taking place this vasana for bhoga of all sukha simultaneously becomes a badaka becomes badha badha for what for jivan mukti and thereby this person this jiva takes janma where there is an association with hiranya garbha upadhi and has sukha bhoga if at all he has had jnana which has obstacles in the form of this sukha bhoga vasana then 
at the end of that vasana however long it is then the jiva will you know have this jnana phala of mukti and when the brahma loka is resolved then this jiva will get mukti however if this jiva has not got jnana and with upasana he has just got the phala of just is not a simple just it is a huge just meaning he has got an immense sukha bhoga which is the highest one can get in the ananda uh, the ananda mimamsa of the itri upanishad hiranyagarbha is the last attainable status the highest ananda objectifiable ananda which one can attain therefore this hiranyagarbhatvam is the highest upadhi one can have and the highest bhoga but one who has no desire for such bhoga will take to jnana proper and will stay the course without slipping so without chuti if one follows the without fall from that vairagya if one keeps to jnana alone then jivan mukti or even krama mukti is possible but this hiranyagarbha prapti will be para only as a relative para because there is a possible janma even if there is no janma there is a long long multi yuga vasa as hiranyagarbha therefore also it is not superior the most superior it is apekshika paratvam so apekshika paratva vishishte hiranyagarbhe vritti rastu vritti is this meaning that you are claiming as brahma that meaning is not applicable because phala is parichinna desha parichinna phala shruti lingena because desha parichinna desha if the desha is given as a phala any loka whatever is given as a phala which is parichinna limited because any desha however big will be limited compared to the sarvagata brahma so sarvagata brahma is available in all deshas there is no desha which is separate from brahma so that brahma who is available everywhere at all times but here everywhere in all deshas simultaneously available simultaneously it is only single limitless entity there is no other from the vedantis perspective but if you say brahma is sarvagata the yayika will say at multiple atmas are also sarvagata but in any which way you take sarvagata brahma who is available in sarva desha whereas this desha parichinna phala has been mentioned for this upasana their para shabd in the upasya para purusha has to mean apekshika paratvam claims the puro pakshi therefore it has to be in hiranyagarbha and in hiran hiranyagarbha you take the gauna artha you the siddhanti should take the gauna artha just like you have done earlier the mukhya meaning should be trumped by this gauna meaning why because of phala is phala being parichinna desha that will become a linga to use the gauna as a meaning the mukhya meaning will no longer remain mukhya and gauna will take primary importance this is the drishtant sangati iti drishtant sangatya idamah thereby ikshati karmaadi karanam has come up ikshati karma vyapadeshat sah ikshati karma vyapadeshat sah so sutra is ikshati karma vyapadeshat sah so what is the meaning there ध्यान कर्म ब्रह्मण व्यपदेशा सो वॉट इज मीन सेट इज यस्य ध्यान तस्व दर्शन 
so there is a teaching of what ekshana kriya uh, not teaching of ekshana kriya as dhyana dhyaya so the ekshati karma the ekshati karma the ekshati is darshana upasana karma so upasaka has been told to do ekshati as karma meaning upasana karma darshana karma upasana karma upasana karma is on which upasya meaning ekshati has been told for which karma which vishaya which upasya entity so that darshana or upasana is ordained for whichever karma which so karma so this ekshati karma meaning what ekshati karma there is not kriya so although i said ekshati karma but ekshati you take ekshati as dhyana upasana and that upasana has been taught what is the karma of that upasana karma meaning the vishaya or upasya of that upasana so what has been taught vipadesha meaning teaching of which karma is there in that ekshati of the upasaka ekshati is the kriya so ekshati karma if i say ekshati equal to karma i have to say but karma is a separate word there karma is to be taken as vishaya so ekshati is the upasana kriya whose upasana kriya of the upasaka so upasaka's ekshati has been ordained you do this upasana this is the shruti then on which entity should i do upasana which is the karma for that ekshati upasana that karma whatever has been taught vipadesha that entity is brahma says this siddhanti so karya brahma upasana is there as per puro pakshi who is karya brahma hiranyagarbha whereas siddhanti says this upasana all right but it is not karya brahma it is para brahma it is para brahma karya brahma the the first jeeva prathama jata jeeva is hiranyagarbha who is also called as karya brahma so ekshati karma vyapadeshat sah who's seen this uh, the dhyana has been ordained on akshara in the earlier section <coughs> there that akshara is brahma here also the purusha who is been told as upasya that purusha is para purusha and para is who which kind of para parat param purushayam purusham ikshate iti vakya shesha there is a vakya shesha there so parat param that para if you say is a paratvam of the para purusha is apekshika paratvam and thereby hiranyagarbha is the meaning if at all you the purubakshi claims that then there is vakya shesha there as parat param if that para is apekshika then apekshikat parat param purishayam purusham ikshate so even para to that apekshika para hiranyagarbha there is another para who is ishvara parabrahma that from parabrahma is the ikshati karma is the upasya in that upasana so whether you get limited phala or not is is not deciding factor in upasya being limited it is like you go to samudra samudra is a vast body of water you carry a mug you carry a bucket or whatever you carry is up to you or you immerse yourself in the ocean and say this entire ocean is mine just because all of these people who approach the ocean are approaching the same ocean which you can say is is limitless you know from the worldly perspective you can say oh, we look at a huge water body where i can't see any boundary other than where i am standing i can see no boundary 
therefore you know from the laukika perspective let's say vast limitless ocean you know there is water everywhere or you imagine a person in a in a middle of the ocean somewhere and then he cannot see any to make the example more valid he cannot see any piece of land anywhere however far he looks using his binoculars also he cannot see any land anywhere and there are multiple such people now just because all of them are in the ocean and imagine for some reason they try to pick up some water so another person immerses himself in the ocean saying that done with this entire ocean he claims as this entire ocean i is mine or whatever some such example you know imagine a limitless as the karma here even if the upasya is limitless the phala need not be limitless it it is dependent on the upasaka how much and what he does or even if you meditate on the upasya which is limitless the way it has been said still the phala may be limited in fact we'll say that even if you get hiranya garbha padvi it is limited puro you the puro pakshi thinks that upasana will give you limitless phala that is not our perspective it will give you limited phala if the gnana does not take place even in brahma loka then the jiva will be reborn punaravartate iti shrute but no sa punaravartate iti shruti is that shruti is applicable only to a gnani whether that gnani is a gnani in this loka or paraloka is irrelevant but that is mandatory jnani eva moksha and that moksha is not apekshika the moksha that you talk about hiranyagarbha being the phala as limitless if at all that is the limitless phala that you think it is not limitless shastra drushya it is also parichinna so even if one gets the complete phala and complete phala of upasana and it is limitless as per the puru pakshi it is not limitless so when that phala itself not limitless although the dhyana vastu is limitless then what to talk about other phalas of other upasakas on a limitless entity so phala is not a driving point in limitlessness uh, in limitedness of the dhyana vastu however other way round is not possible what logic we have used earlier saying that the phala is limitless what limitless phala is brahma loka so you can see brahma loka is the phala and the upasya is not brahma there we can argue that upasya has to be brahma because brahma loka is the phala brahma loka phala won't be resulting from a from an upasana which is on a limited entity limited entity will give you limited phala dhyana on limited entity will give you limited phala this is a niyama dhyana on brahma lok brahma alone will give brahma loka this is also phala uh, this is also a niyama this is also logically valid but dhyana on a limitless entity will give you limitless phala there is no such rule dhyana on limitless can give you limited phala because every person who is doing dhyana without knowing shastras also if the guru says you do dhyana on your ishta devata that ishta devata is not to be seen as a limited sum entity even when any one does any dhyana on any ishta devata that ishta devata should be seen as ishwara parmatma who is limitless so no no upasaka or bhakta wants to say that my ishta devata is limited being he can only give me this much no every bhakta and upasaka says that my ishta devata can give me anything and everything he is sarvaswa he has capacity to give everything i just have to do the upasana well i have to live up to that expectation if i live up to his expectation he or she can give me anything and everything this is the limitlessness of the ishta devata also but does the upasaka get everything no upasaka gets everything even when the upasya ishta devata is everything is parabrahma 
Similarly here, just because Parabrahma, uh, just because, oh, sorry, Upasya, just because your Upasya is giving you limited phala, Upasana is giving you limited phala, does not mean that the Upasya is limited. This is the argument of the Siddhanti, saying that no such rule is there. So, Atra Puro Pakshe Karya Brahma Upasthi hi. So, Saha, that Upasya Devata is Brahma alone. It is Brahma only. So, Ikshati uh, Karma Vyapadeshat Vyapadishtaha Saha Brahma Eva. Whoever is taught as Upasya Vyapadishta, Upasya Saha Brahma Eva. Here, Saha Ullinga has been used. So, Parabrahma, uh, the Upasya is Parabrahma Saha. Atra Puro Pakshe Kari Brahma Upasti. The Mantra Vakya is, the Vishay Vakya is discussing Upasana or Kari Brahma, Kari Brahma being. Hiranyagarva. Siddhanti Parabrahma Upasthi Riti Phalaveda. Siddhanti says yes, it is an Upasana, but Upasana is an Parabrahma, not Kare Brahma, not Hiranyagarva. Prashna Upanishadi Shruyate. Yaf Punaretam Trimatrena Om Ityetena Evaksharena Param Purusham Abhidhyayita Iti. So this Akshara that has been discussed in Chandogya or in Grihad. So, wherever this akshara is talked about, even if it is upasya, not only jnana kanda, but upasya also, that akshara is parabrahma. It has to mean parabrahma. The akshara has same meaning all over CSD Siddhanti. So, he quotes from Prashna Upanishad also that akshara that is talked about, that akshara is also nakshrati iti aksharam. So, etena eva aksharena. Param Purusham Abhidhyayita. Even in that Prashna Upanishad, the Akshara there talked about is through this Trimatrena Om. So, what has been said is that this Om is Akshara. Now, Puropakshi had claimed Akshara is Varna and dragged that Akshara meaning into Omkara and called it as Omkara Upasana earlier. In this section, there is Omkara Upasana only in Prashna Upanishad. And Om has been mentioned there. Om iti etene vaksharena. So there that akshara, Om is not Varana. It also stands for Parabrahma. Akaro vai as we saw earlier. In Mandukya Upanishad also the Omkara which is discussed there with each and every matra there and Amatra also. Akara, Ukara, Makara which covers Jagra, Sopna and Sushupti at Vyashti and Samashti levels respectively. So, Trimatrena tri and then the Amatra is there discussed in Mandukya Upanishad. That stands for Entire Vyasti Samashti Prapancha in all three avastas, and the Amatra there is Turiya, which is Parabrahma, which pervades Akara, Ukara, Makara. The silence Amatra with the silence pervades Akara, Ukara, Makara because Akara, Ukara, Makara all come from silence. From Amatra itself, there is a Matra Utpatti there. Amatra is not Shunya. Amatra is Brahma Parabrahma. And then there is a discussion of all, it stands for all Namas because Akara, Ukara, Makara. Akara is when you open the mouth. Makara is when you close the mouth. Ukara stands for every letter which can be pronounced by opening the mouth till you close the mouth. Therefore, Akara, Ukara and Makara, in short, Akara, stands for everything, every letter and every letter if Omkara covers, then Omkara covers every word also because no word is made from any other letter 
other than what omkara covers therefore om stands for all shabdas all namas and nama meaning pada all namas all padas mimamsa says puro yamsa and uttar mimamsa also what does it say shruti says that based on shruti of course that pada and padartha are abhinna there is no bheda between pada and padartha therefore this entire prapancha which has anything and everything which can be named where there is an abhida the abhidheya padartha of any nama is also abhinna from omkara and that omkara is nothing but brahma so this is to explain how omkara stands for brahma covered elsewhere but it is all shruti the same omkara when it becomes upasya this omkara is again not written omkara it is a sound omkara is a sound it is a trimatrika so it has three matras it is a pluta so with that pluta shabda on that pluta shabda dhyana should be done it should not be written or you know put it up on the wall and done in any case no other ashram should do omkara upasana omkara upasana adhikara shuddha omkara shuddha omkara adhikara is only for a sanyasi people do all sorts of things om chanting people do without uh, initiation om is a bija mantra it should not be chanted without initiation and on, only omkara without anything else om the adhikara is there only for a sanyasi no one else so this is anyway uh, an aside just because we understand and we can you know make sense out of the upasana does not bring us adhikara into that upasana we should be uh, alert to that fact because uh, there should be no ardha jarati nyaya ardha jarati nyaya means what it, it means that uh, the nyaya says that uh, you should not uh, there is no possibility of ardha ardha sharira jarati meaning half of the body is aging whereas the other half is not aging or part of the body is aging the other part is not aging that never happens the complete body ages so similarly ardha jaratiya nyaya should not be used with shastra shastra is to be taken as a whole single unit you cannot say that i agree with this 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 part and then okay orthodoxy i'll give it up that other shastra i'll give, give it up because this omkara vai sanyasi i i mean i can chant i understand it i can also chant it. just be i can also you know cut bodies or you know pick up medications and give does not make me a doctor just because i can cut bodies with as much ease as a trained surgeon can do does not give me the right to cut bodies it is a it is a crime similarly from the shastra drishti it is a papa karma if you give up some if we give up some part and say that i don't agree with this i'll do it anyway so trimatrena om ittiyetena eva aksharana param purusham abhidhyayit this is an dhyana has been recommended has uh, not recommended has been ordained so iti tatra dhyayam vastu kim hiranyagarbhakyam aparam brahma uta param brahma iti vishaye when there is a samshaya there is an argument or a doubt as to dwandva as to what is the meaning there para brahma you can say para para brahma hiranyagarbha also para brahma is i mean brahm para can stand for para brahma also and hiranyagarbha also so apara brahma hiranyagarbha or para brahma also there is purusha purusha and param purusha word has been used param this param shabd can mean apara brahma karya brahma hiranyagarbha also so what has been said here aparam brahma param can param mean aparam yes it can mean as in the introduction the pura pakshi has explained as to there is a linga as to limited phala is there tatra dhyam vastu kim hiranyagarbha akyam aparam brahma although it is a param purusham still aparam can be the meaning uta param param brahma iti vishaye aparam iti purva paksha siddhantastu sad dhyatavya paramatma eva that sah that entity who is dhyatavya upasya is paramatma whereas by apara meaning 
पूर्व पक्षी से रिलेटेड हिरण्य गर्भ बोध से रिलेटेड उपासना कुतः वाई शुड जी ध्येय ध्यातव्य उपास्य भी पर ब्रह्म परमात्मा सो सिद्धांत इसे ईक्षति कर्म व्यपदेशा सूत्र इसे ईक्षति कर्म व्यपदेशा परात परम पुरिशयम पुरुषम ईक्षते इसे वाक्यशेषे ध्यातव्यस्य ईक्षति कर्मत्वेन व्यपदेशा दैट ईक्षति कर्मत्वेन एस दी ईक्षति उपासना कर्म मीनिंग उपासना विषय विषयत्वेन कर्मत्वेन मीन्स विषयत्वेन उपास्य कर्मत्वेन उपासना कर्मत्वेन एस उपास्य who is been ordained as upasya devata there parat param purishayam purishayam is purishete one who is there in all pur pur is sharira in all shariras in all shariras who is there because purishete means sleeps in the sharira or exists in the sharira shete uh, there sleeps is not literal sleeps meaning what he sleeps to the kartrutva कर्तृत्व भोग करता ही स्लीप्स टू फॉर एवरी बायास एक्शन ही स्लीप्स टू व्हाट इज ही ही इज शुद्ध साक्षी ही इज अ शुद्ध साक्षी फॉर ऑल जीवास रिसाइडिंग इन देयर वेरी शरीर एज वी साइड द्वास उपर्ण मंत्र व्हिच हैज कम अप अ फ्यू सूत्रा जरिए कपल ऑफ अधिकरण जरिए वी सॉ द मुंडक मंत्र वेयर द्वास उपर्ण देयर आर टू वर्ड्स Two atmas in one sharira, as do two atmas. Similarly, here Paramatma Purishaya. Purishaya is there. Who is that Purishaya? He is only Purush. Purishaya Purusha is only Paramatma. Because the other, who is also there in the pur in the sharira, he is not sleeping. He is an active Purusha. That jivatma, samsari jivatma is active. That's why he is a samsari. He is not asleep to every karma and bhoga. He is alive and kicking, as we say. He is alive and kicking. He wants to do as much as possible to gain as much as possible. Therefore, the purushaya purusha is not jiva. If at all somebody has a confusion in the puro paksha, as to it can be. Jiva also no Purishaya is not Jiva it is Paramatma and Hiranyagarbha is not Purishaya because Hiranyagarbha if at all you say oh he is also there because uh, he has bhoga of all all sukha of all jivas if at all you argue then we will say okay let's hypothetically assume that Hiranyagarbha is all pervasive or all in all shariras but he is a bhogta. He is not one who is sleeping to the bhoga, so purishaya cannot be hiranyagarbha parat param and parat para is there, who is superior to all paras also that para purusha is paramatma ikshate. Iti vakya sheshe dhato vyasya, so one who sees as a sakshi that entity in dhara kasha in hridaya kasha. इस ध्यातव्या दैट ध्यातव्यस्य तस्य ध्यातव्यस्य ईक्षति कर्मत्वेन व्यपदेशात ड्यू टू टीचिंग व्यपदेशा ऑफ दैट एंटिटी एस कर्म कर्मत्वेन कर्मत्वेन विषयत्वेन उपास्यत्वेन एस एन उपास्य ऑफ ईक्षति ऑफ उपासना ऑफ दर्शना फॉर दी ऑफ दी ध्यातव्या दैट ध्यातव्या एस दी विषया इस ओनली ब्रह्म है वाक्य शेष परमात्मा ध्यान ध्यान एक विषयत्व सो बिकॉज ध्यान एंड ईक्षण हु इज दिस ईक्षते ईक्षण इज देर हु इज दैट वन हु इज सींग सो देर वन हु इज वन हु इज हैविंग दिस ईक्षति उपासक ईक्षति बट हियर ईक्षते इज देर सीज वन हु सीज दिस पुरीशय पुरुषा एंड अविध्यात ध्यान हैज टू बी डन ऑन दैट सो हु इज द कर्मा फॉर ईक्षति सो हियर ईक्षति आई सेट उपासना बट उपास 
saka has to be ekshana so that is also part of upasana so the upasana abhidhyayita can be taken as dhyana or upasana and ekshati is also part of upasana that can be taken as ekshana karma so you can separate out two vakyas in the same section one is abhid by abhidhyayita as a vidhi it is dhyana vidhi upasana vidhi and ekshana is also what here ekshate parat param purushayam purusham ekshate this one sees this that is also part of upasana so who is seen in dharakasha i'll use a passive voice there but ekshate there is not passive voice but then one who sees that purusha the same is the upasaka one who is seeing the purusha in the hridaya akasha as purushaya purusha he is the same upasaka who is doing upasana in which manner as dhyana in which manner param purusham aksharena omkarena aksharena param purusham abhidhyayita so dhyana is done through omkara on which upasya the same upasya who is seen as who is who this upasaka sees in the so to keep it literal active voice has to ekshate this upasaka sees this purusha as purushaya who is paratpara that same ekshana karma vishaya is the ek dhyana karma vishaya also this purusha as param purusham in the earlier mantra and the vakya shesha paratparam purushayam purusham although the dhatus are different meaning kingantas are different abhidhyayita and ekshate there are two kriyas mentioned but both have param purusham one is parat param purusham in the ekshana karma who is purushaya that purusha is purushaya whereas omkarena aksharena etena eva aksharena param purusham abhidhyaya is there para purusha is mentioned in the abhidhyana kriya so dhyana and the ekshana karma are to be the same that is the dhyana ekshana yor eka vishayatva niyamat when one is said that you see this and then you say do dhyana on this for example in gayatri mantra i'll not uh, chant the gayatri mantra but anvaya is possible gayatri there is a niyama as to gayatri should not be chanted loudly no one else should be here should hear this and in uh, havyakas we have a niyama that you should not even chant standing on the ground with naked feet touching the ground even the bhumi should not hear and uh, in this era we have uh, gayatri being sung on loud speakers that do by uninitiated by women anyway that's a separate thing i'm just saying the reason that why i am not chanting the gayatri mantra loudly but then parts of the mantra can be taken or you can see anvaya also so what is if you look at the bhashya there uh, bhashya since it is said that uh, shankaracharya has a bhashya whether it is the same shankaracharya we do not know but there is a bhashya by some shankaracharya we can see bhagavat pad here also it can be any other uh, bhashya there but then the bhashya there if you look up the anvaya is done in such a manner there it says that uh, one who i'll paraphrase it one who uh who does who does uh, prachodayana of buddhi one who does prachodana of buddhi one who prods the buddhi one who blesses the buddhi let's just say one who blesses the buddhi on that entity we are doing dhyana so quite a tatastha lakshana kind of a dhyana meaning these are the dharmas that is not mentioned what has been said so uh, so dhiya yah nah asmakam dhiya prachodayat which is that he is the bharga the who that entity who blesses our intellect 
in such a manner that it functions in keeping with dharma i do dhyana on that because although it in the brahmachari when he starts chanting gayatri it blesses the entire family but still because the uh, prachodayat can also be taken as a vidhi but yaha is there so yaha will go earlier yat shabda will go earlier in the anvaya and then tat so yat that entity yaha prachodayat so there so dhimahi there when you say dhimahi so there we do dhyana on that entity i do dhyana on that entity the meditation is on that entity who blesses our intellects so you take that kind of a meaning loosely if that is the gayatri artha there are two timanta padas there so whoever is the karma whoever is the karta of the dhee prachodana the same entity i meditate upon should be meditated upon it has to be same entity so the prachodana karta is the one who becomes the karma of dhyana similarly here what has been said dhyana ikshana or eka vishayatva niyama the vishaya should be same for the ikshana and dhyana so i am just giving an example of a well known gayatri there just to show you that how these mantras are to be understood you cannot have a separate entity there so and the dhyana who, who are you doing dhyana on whoever is invoked and praised or whatever has been his dharmas have been recollected by the upasaka on that entity the dhyana is so here you are saying that there is a there is an ikshana karma given for the upasaka to look at this purusha and do dhyana on this purusha it can be in that particular dhar akasha itself so wherever this dt is being looked into if you are doing dhyana there itself then it cannot be a different vishaya the purusha has to be the same so this parat para purusha who is purishaya he is the meaning of this aksharena param para purusha also aksharena who is upasya as para purusha that para purusha he is the same para purusha who is purishaya and parat para and since the this ikshana vishaya ikshana karma ikshadi karma he is para brahma therefore sah upasya api para brahma eva सह पुरुषा सो वाय पुलिंग सह पुरुषा बिकॉज परम पुरुषम अभिधीये पुरुषम इज द्वितीय ऑफ पुरुष पुलिंग शब्द द्वितीय विभक्ति एक वचन सो सह पुरुष सिंस दैट पुरुष एज इन दीक्षति कर्म सो नाउ सिंस द मंत्र आर अवेलेबल सी इट्स डिफिकल्ट टू नॉट लुक एट दी वृत्ति एंड गिव दी सूत्र अर्थ सो वेर दी सूत्र अर्थ हेज बीन गिवन इन अ वेरी बेसिक मैनर वेर इट does not make complete sense i'll revisit and correct that uh, sutra so i am doing that now so where i mentioned ikshati as upasakas ikshati karma yes upasakas but ikshati itself is not upasana it is part of upasana all right but upasana mantra will be abhidhyayita vidhi whereas ikshate is not an upasana vidhi it is part of the upasana vidhi all right but it is not dhyana ikshana is seeing that and doing upasana on that so we, it is put together it's a single uh, in a single unit of upasana but upas upasya is mentioned here that param purusham abhidhyayita and who is that upasya for that you have to look up ikshana karma so therefore ikshati karma is the second mantra ikshati karma vyapadesha due to the teaching of the ikshana eeksh, karma ikshana vishaya being param brahma parat para purusha therefore this earlier purusha sah api in the dhyana mantra upasana mantra is also sah upasya purusha brahma eva so that is the sutra artha uh, details now since we have two mantras available now vakya shesha also so vakya shesha dhyatave se ikshati karmat pere upadesha 
ध्यान ईक्षण एक विषय तो नियमा दि रूल इज दट यू कैन नॉट हेव ईक्षण ऑफ वन एंड देन यू ध्यान ऑन अनदर सो इट इज द सेम so if you look at the uh, you know in uh, the uh, sandhya vandan also you look at the surya but the upasya has to be surya you cannot have uh, someone else so there dhyana ekshana yo eka vishayatva niyama so this is a better understood example of uh, those who do this karma uh, the sandhya vandan while looking at the surya in sankshepa all that is not there so i am just mentioning that if at all one is aware of that so dhyana ekshana yo eka vishayatva niyama atah krama muktyartham omkara avalambanena ध्यातव्य परमात्म सामंजसम देर फोर दिस ध्यान विल नॉट गिव लिमिटलेस फल मीनिंग यस देश परिच्छिन्न फल ब्रह्मलोक वासा इज देर एस फल सो क्रम मुक्ति अर्थम ऑल दैट इज क्रम मुक्ति अर्थम देर इज नो मुक्ति All right, we agree. But Brahma Mukti is possible if Nyana takes place in Brahma Loka. Then this Upasaka will also get Mukti. But just because the phala is limited does not mean the Upasya is also limited. So, atha Brahma Mukti artham Omkara Avalambani na Omkara Avalamba. So, Omkara Avalamba. Avalamba is also fine. Omkara Avalamba through Omkara Avalamba as Avalamba using Omkara as the Aid to do upasana. Who is dhyatavya? That dhyatavya upasya is paramatma. Hey, we can understand this. It is, it is absolutely perfect. There is absolutely no question of upasya being limited there. This is the thirteenth uh, sutra. We look at the fourteenth in the next part. I have over short time because this is a little. Um, I mean, the words are also complicated, and uh, it is a little complex sutra. as compared to our earlier uh, walk throughs of uh, you know um, with just looking at the dharmas so there is no uh, looking at the dharma uh, interpretation of the sutra is not that simple here dhyana upasana itself is is difficult it is not as easy as jnana kanda upasanas because there are lot of niyamas and uh, adhikara all these will come together in upasana separately then in jnana we are used to शुद्ध ज्ञान कांड उपासनास आर दे गेट अ लिटिल ट्रिकी सो द हेंस अ लिटिल मोर टाइम हियर अमरेंद्र एकदम सिद्ध महादि मध्यांत वर्जितम आनंद खरम अपूर्णम आत्मज्योति उपासमे ओम तत्सत नमस्ते नमस्ते थैंक यू थैंक यू